Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration, Saturday 27, 2024. May the good Lord be with you today and may his peace be upon you as you go through this wonderful day. Our reading today comes to us from Galatians chapter 5, reading verse 16 to 26. And it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. 18 says, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seductions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Verse 24, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. 25, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 26 and last says, Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks this morning for His Word. Truly, it is a reminder to us that character is important when it comes to to a Christian, when it comes down to anybody for that matter, but especially when it comes to a Christian. Your character helps to identify who you are and whose you are. The reading states that the flesh and the spirit are warring against each other in a manner of speaking. That is to say that we are being pull in two different direction one direction we are pulled to fulfill our own selfish desire we are pulled to loss after the things of this life and then there's another pull that is of the spirit that is trying to guide us to make good choices to help us to walk in the way of the Lord to do the things that are right and pleasing in the sight of God. Paul said it this way. He said that he said that the things that he desires to do, those are the things he don't do. But the things which he is not desirous of doing, those are the things that he finds himself doing. The flesh and the spirit are, you know, they are like oil and water they just don't mix and so we have to make a choice are we going to walk in the way of the lord are are we going to follow our own desires and loss after the things of this life it gives some examples as to what those loss consists of it gives a few examples it speaks about the loss of the flesh. It talks about the fact that these will help you to identify 
the differences between those things that are of God and those things that are not of God. Now from verse 19 until the next three verses, it states that now the works of the flesh are manifest. And it gives some example. What are the examples that it gave? What are the examples that it gives? It says that adultery, fornication, uncleanness, stealing, lying, and the list goes on. All of these things, hatred, so we eat people without a cause, or even if we have reasons to eat them, we shouldn't eat them. Witchcraft, idolatry, strife, all of these things, murdering, drunkenness, these things come under the loss of the flesh. These things are manifestation of the desires of the flesh. And so if these are the things that we aim towards and if these are the things that we practice, then it therefore means that we are manifesting the characteristics of the flesh or we are at enmity with God. Because we must understand according to scripture that sin cannot exist in the presence of God. And those who are identified with God daily walk in his presence. And so we cannot be lusting after the things of the world, lusting after our own selfish desire, and yet still want the spirit to come and dwell within us. No, it doesn't work that way. We have to make a choice. We have to choose this day whom we will serve. But it didn't stop there. It went on to help us to identify the things or the characteristics, help us to identify the characteristics of the spirit so you can clearly differentiate between the two. Now, what are the characteristics of the spirit? Verse 22, it starts by saying that it is love because love is the glue that will hold the other fruits together because if we love then we will be joyful and we will share joy if we love we will be peaceful if we love we will be long-suffering if we love we will be gentle with others if we love we will be good and if we love we will be faithful people we will practice faith we will be meek if we practice love and we will learn to be temperance. So, it, these help you and I to identify what kind of character we need to exhibit as believers. Because, as it say, if we are not practicing these things, we cannot call ourselves or we cannot be identified as God's children. That's a very serious, serious thing. Serious, serious thing. And so, let us understand how important it is to manifest the right kind of spirit. We need to stand for God or if we don't want to walk with him, then naturally we will be walking with the devil. And I know nobody wants that. I hardly think anybody wants to be identified with Satan. But pre-adventure, there is such a person. I pray, and we are all praying, that somehow the Holy Spirit will reveal himself and bring you into the light. But I, I doubt that anybody wants to. Nevertheless, let us draw near to God so that these fruits can be identified with us. Let us practice to share these these fruits with those around us let us stop provoking each other let us stop envying each other we should be happy for each other we should be rejoicing with each other we should help each other to grow spiritually we should be praying for each other not tearing each other down that's not the gift we have been given and that's not the character of the spirit of god it's some other spirit and so for those of us who are walking with Christ, the Bible says that we have to crucify the flesh. And with all these affections of lust, 
we have to lay them down. They cannot be a part of our life anymore because now we have taken on the righteousness of Christ. Amen? And so if we live in the Spirit of God, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us stay close to Jesus where He can guide us in the path that we need to take. Let us not be desirous, as the readings say, of vain glory. Let us not try to please the crowd or feel left out because we are not doing something that everybody else is doing. So we feel like the black sheep, you know. And sometimes we let others intimidate us and, you know, make us feel small because we are not doing the things that they are doing. Sometimes they will make statement like, you know, you are missing out. Missing out on what? Doing something that is not right? And so we have to understand what it is it mean to be pure. What does it mean to live righteously? And what does it mean to be a person that stands for principle? You cannot allow others to sway you into things that are unholy and wrong. And so, brethren, I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit will guide us, all of us, and help us to bear these fruits so that the Spirit of God can be manifest in our lives and so that others through our experiences and through our daily living may find Jesus. May God continue to bless you and keep you as you continue to serve him. Amen.